The Memorial Weekend for those who have died of AIDS ended tonight with a candlelight vigil. Demonstrators walked from the mall to St. Peter's Church in Southeast for a prayer service. One highlight of the weekend was the display of the 13-ton Memorial AIDS quilt. As New 7's David Paulson explains, due to its size, this is the last time the quilt will be seen in its entirety. Even on the last day, new quilts were added to the Names Project that at last count totaled 12,000 and covered 14 acres of the ellipse each hand-sewn patch bearing the name and a bit of the life of a man, woman, or child who died from AIDS. But I wanted to get to know the people uh, that are in the same panel as him because we did share a lot, you know, not together, but we shared it across the miles, the same loss. It is the last time all the quilts will be assembled together. As AIDS claimed more lives, additional quilts made the name's project too cumbersome and costly to manage. But organizers say it was a success. By sheer numbers, a powerful message was laid down in the nation's capital. David Paulson, News 7, Late Edition. That AIDS comes only from a dirty hypodermic needle or indiscriminate sex, think again. Or better yet, meet a family, a model family, caught up in the AIDS epidemic through no fault of their own. In 1981, the Glazers had a baby girl. The birth was a difficult one, and the mother was given seven pints of blood. It never dawned on them that that blood could have been contaminated or that there was any reason why three years later they shouldn't have another baby. As we said, it was the early 80s and AIDS contaminated blood was something almost no one ever heard of, let alone worried about. Certainly not Paul Michael Glazer, who played Starsky on the TV series Starsky and Hutch, and his wife Elizabeth. But a year and a half ago, their little girl died of AIDS. And during her illness, they discovered that both Elizabeth and their little boy had the AIDS virus in their system. When we were told our medical situation, our family had three members who had AIDS or were infected with the HIV virus, our doctor said, don't tell anyone. The world is not ready for your family. They were a Hollywood couple to be envied. He's now a successful director. She was the exhibits director of the LA Children's Museum. But as soon as they started sharing their tragic reality, they began to experience firsthand the discrimination that, until then, they had only read about. It was the Scarlet Letter. We experienced uh, varying degrees of people saying we couldn't, they couldn't be close to us, their kids couldn't, kids couldn't play with our kids. Um, and as a result of that, we uh, really lowered the wall. We had to lie. We had to keep this secret. We had to worry about all these things on top of the horror that we were living every day. Although Elizabeth and their young son Jake had the HIV virus in their systems, Ariel already had full-blown AIDS and she was getting sicker by the day. The disease affects children differently than it does adults and, as in most cases, it attacked Ari's central nervous system. She couldn't read, she couldn't write, she couldn't walk, she couldn't talk for months. Um, I mean, she we loved her. Had, she also had a lot of pain. A lot of pain. She suffered greatly. She had innumerable things. She didn't have an immune system. So she was vulnerable. And I looked at her one day and I knew she was starting to fail. And I picked up the phone and, and called the doctor and said, she's starting to fail. We have to get AZT. It was the only hope. Up until that time, Ari had been treated only with antibiotics. The so-called miracle drug AZT wasn't yet approved by the FDA for use by children. But the Glazers were desperate. They pulled every string, used every contact. Elizabeth even went to Washington and spoke to anyone who would listen. Finally, they were able to get the drug for Ari. And it had a remarkable impact on our daughter. And um, for three months, she, she hadn't spoken a word. And after three weeks on intravenous AZT, I walked into her room and she said, good morning, mom, I love you. And I mean, I went into pot and said, you know, she talked, you know, and every day after that for nine weeks, she improved. She was walking, she was reading, she was writing. The hope of drugs is there. I, I saw it in my house. But for Ari, the AZT came too late to ease her pain. By then the disease had too strong a hold and three months later, she died, and the Glazers tried not to be too bitter. 
we've lost a child and we have a child's life who hangs in the balance and there are many many others like that and now you're not naive anymore and there is anger and there are problems and there are answers to the problems and there are people who don't want to look at the problems or the answers. Elizabeth decided that people ought to look at the problem and find some answers. With two friends, she founded the Pediatric AIDS Foundation and set out to educate everyone that AIDS in children is a very different disease than adult AIDS. And to sound the alarm that in 10 years there could be as many as 20,000 kids born with AIDS. She's determined to raise money for research programs so that someday what happened to their child won't happen to somebody else's. I'm not a lobbyist. I'm a mom with a child whose life hangs in the balance. And then I am the person who can speak for all those other children whose life hangs in the balance. And they deserve their best shot. And her best shot is what they get. You know, we were originally told that the money for the $10 million was new money. And She's relentless in her pursuit of money for the cause. She's made eight trips to Washington to oh. beg, plead, and cajole any and all who will listen. The last page is the overview of the FY90 budget. Okay, but so and now, Elizabeth and her friend and co-founder, Susan De Laurentiis, are preparing to storm Washington for the ninth time. Right. They have to add new, new money. money into the budget. Yeah. If they take it from, you know, something else, that's not okay either. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can do They've made a lot of good friends on Capitol Hill. Among them, the assistants to Senators Hatch and Metzenbaum, who have helped them through the maze that is the Washington bureaucracy. But there will be an identified person whose only issue is focusing on pediatric AIDS and the coordinated effort within the government. So what do you need to put that in place? Do you need a, do you need a bill? Do you need a... Uh, do you just need them to have the resolve to do it over there and they, they them name to somebody? Isn't that what, what we need? Well, you tell us. And who puts together that bill? Whatever senator or congressman thinks that they... Good idea. Nice Good to see, see you. Kids. Good to see you. Hi, They've even been able to make strange bedfellows of Senators Hatch and Metzenbaum. Last summer, these two senators, who are at opposite ends of the political spectrum, joined together to help plan a fundraiser for the Pediatric AIDS Foundation, which raised $2 million. And Glazer hopes they'll do it again this year. Good morning. How are you? Good. When you see Elizabeth Glazer in motion, it's hard to believe that this ball of relentless energy also has the HIV virus and at the moment is taking precautionary doses of AZT. Should you be doing so much? I mean, shouldn't you be conserving your energy? I think about that sometimes, but I only know one way to live, and that's full force. I'm in a race against the clock. I've been infected for over eight years, and my son's been infected since his birth. And I have to do everything I can right now and not think about the future too much. How much, realistically, do you think you'll get done? I don't like to think in realistic terms, first of all. Um, I'd, like to get it, I'd like to get everything in place in the next 12 months um, in terms of the, the government's responsibility and their goals being consistent with our goals. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I don't, if I dealt with what was realistic, I don't know that I'd be able to leave my house. This was the Glazers' first public appearance since their personal drama began, premiere of the Columbia Pictures movie, Immediate Family. And it's a benefit for the Pediatric AIDS Foundation. During the last three years, they have, for the most part, lived with their secret, sharing it only with close friends and family. But then, last May, on the first anniversary of their daughter Ari's death, they got word that the supermarket tabloid The National Enquirer was planning a cover story on them. And although they used every means available, they couldn't dissuade them from printing it. But they beat The Enquirer to the punch. They gave their story to the LA Times, saying, if our story's going to come out, we wanted to come out our way. And it turns out that there was a very happy ending, that our community and school rallied behind us. I mean, people called up and said, we're not afraid of you. We want to know how can we help you? What can we do? And they're here tonight to thank their friends and colleagues for coming to the benefit and a lot more. To those friends whom we see often, to those friends whom we see only occasionally, and to this industry, 
that I believe always knew in part, sometimes only as a rumor, some version of our story, and chose to honor our privacy, and now has rallied to support the issue of pediatric AIDS. To all of you, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. One of the reasons that Paul and Elizabeth Glazer were forced to live in secret with their terrible reality was that they were afraid of the reaction of this very community. Three years ago, they didn't believe that this scene could have been possible. But the climate in the country has changed somewhat towards those with AIDS. People have become more educated about how you get it and how it is almost impossible to get through casual contact. We are the casualties of the war. But the war is not on the people who are infected. The war is against a virus. And that's where America lost track about this disease. So does it say anything about how difficult it is to get AIDS? I mean, the fact that you had it's a very normal life up until the time you found out. And it's very know. difficult to get it. I've been exposed how long? How long? Give me a quick fill in a number. Well, here. I mean, I was infected for five years before we even knew. So. Paul, were you afraid of getting it? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's uh, absolutely. I mean, no matter how much I was told otherwise, and no matter how much uh, information I, uh, we would get from the doctors, it's an irrational fear. It's there. I mean, we, you know, we share food, we share glasses, we, you know, we kiss, we, you know, he hugs Jake, he, ha you know, Paul is as intimate as any normal husband would be. And he's fine. And I think that that's such an important statement about this disease, that AIDS is not a virus that you can get from just loving someone. Well, good morning, Mr. You? President. <laughs> I'm fine. Good to see you. It's good to see you. I'm so excited. I can't stop smiling right now. <laughs> Elizabeth first met so Ronald Reagan when he no, was in the so White House. And although he didn't jump on the bandwagon when he was in office, former President Reagan is now on board. This is Susan Zegan, President there. Reagan, and Susan De Laurentiis, President Reagan. So the this is the Pediatric AIDS Foundation. Well. <laughs> so anyway, we welcome you and want you to come in and call. Hello, President. Hello there. It's a pleasure. This is my husband, <laughs> Paul Weidner. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure. How are you? Thank you for being with us. He's your director today. As testimony to Glazer's okay, personal so powers of persuasion, it was clear in this public service announcement for the Pediatric AIDS Foundation that the former president has changed his mind. Action on the dolly, Mr. President. We all grow and learn in our lives, and I've learned that all kinds of people can get AIDS, even children. But it's the disease that's frightening, not the people who have it. You can't catch AIDS from hugging someone. I'm not asking you to send money. I'm asking for something more important. Your understanding. Maybe it's time we all learned something new. Cut. Yeah. Yeah. But it's President Bush, not former President Reagan, who they really need now. If you could sit face to face with President Bush, what would you say to him? I'd say you can't stop increasing AIDS money until the pediatric issue has been completely flushed out. Don't let these families be forgotten. We need a team captain. We have a great country, a brilliant country. It can, I believe that we can solve this problem. Maybe not in time to save my son and myself, but certainly in time to save thousands of other people. If we mobilize not just our resources, but an attitude of caring about this disease, I'd like to see that attitude come in a strong way, right from the top. Where do you go from here? What's next? Well, we have two feet, put one foot in front of the other. You don't want to lose your hope. I mean, we don't know when an answer will be found for this disease that might change all of our lives. And where do you go? You love your kid every day. You, you, you walk outside and you appreciate your life, even though it's horrible because you have it, and you learn to love what you have now. <laughs>